My name is Patrick Hopkins. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering here at University of Virginia. I'm also the director of the Excite Lab at UVA. Our primary research interests in the Excite Lab are understanding heat and energy transport in materials in order to better energy efficiency in the United States and abroad. However, another one of our major efforts is outreach and education. This summer, through the generous support from the National Science Foundation and in collaboration with the Hooster program here at UVA, we hosted a high school teacher and a high school student in our lab in order to integrate our research into high school curricula, but also give the high school teacher and student exposure to university level research and research on energy and heat transfer. In the modules that follow, you'll see our high school teacher, Dave Henry, and our high school student, Vinnie Chen, from Stab High School here in Charlottesville. And the integration and collaboration that they had in our lab workspace along with the modules that they developed to bring back to the AP Physics classroom. Hi, my name is Dave Henry and I teach AP Physics at Fairfield Ward High School in Fairfield, Connecticut. I'm also a proud alumni of the University of Virginia. This summer, Patrick Hopkins, who's a professor here at the Department of Mechanical Engineering, has hired me to work uh, with his team of researchers along with a high school student who he has here working in the lab. Uh, there's a program here at the University of Virginia called Hooster, which brings high school students into the college labs to give them an experience of real life science. My role was twofold. I worked partly with the research team of graduate students in collecting and analyzing data, and also with Vinny developing the modules to bring back to our high school classroom. What you're about to see is a glimpse of the modules that we developed. So Vinny, we need to test sample five. Sure, sample five. Um, Ash just needs data for the um, electrical resistivity. Uh, so if we use a four-point probe, we can put a certain current and voltage in there that we will uh, use easily to calculate the resistivity. Um, so this is our four-point probe, Ash. It's a nice piece of equipment. So there's four in a, in a row in the outer tube, put the current through the inner tube, measure the voltage, mm -hmm. and then simple Ohm's law calculation for resistance, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's the data that you'll need for um, thermal right. conductivity. Right. Okay, so that's right about there, 383. Okay. Um, let's do another spot on here. Okay. Then Vinny and I will put these into the spreadsheet, put it in Dropbox, so you guys have it. Yep. Cool. Cool. Good can measure the thermal conductivity on it. Good, good. All right, Vinny, so have you started uh, the lab work? Yeah, I've been measuring the temperature of the hot plate using this thermal clip. Okay. And so that's going to be our T-hot, and that looks like 387? 387, yes. Okay. And what's the next step? We need to measure the, on the, the temperature at the top of the plate. Okay. Yeah, use that. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so we've got to let that resolve a little bit. It's going to decrease. We'll get to uh, what's the, called the steady state temperature. Yes. And that looks like it is 332 okay. Kelvin. Sure. Okay. So you've got tea hot and tea cold. Now, what are the other things you'll need to calculate this? Well, we need the thickness of the material. Okay. So this thickness is uh, the one centimeter sheet. But are we going to put it as one centimeter or? 0.01 meters. 0.01 meter. Good, good, good. Units are key. And now, one other quantity that you would need to calculate the thermal conductivity of this. I need how, how much heat flux is going through. Exactly. And so what we did is we calibrated this and calculated the heat flux. It's right there. It's 1.2 times 10 to the sixth watts per square meter or 1.2 megawatts per square meter. So with all that data, I think you're good to go. You should be able to get, calculate the thermal conductivity or K value for this unknown metal. Sure. Yes. Good. All right. I'll be back in a minute.
right, Vinny, finish up? Yeah. Cool, what'd you get for K? 218 watts per meter Kelvin. 218, all right. Um, this is uh, aluminum. Mm -hmm. Remember what the value is for aluminum? The thermal conductivity value for aluminum is 237 watts per meter Kelvin. Love it, that's exactly it. So, um, we're close, about 10% or so. Um, a few things for your write-up of this. Definitely include all your calculations. Uh, great use of units and everything else. Um, I want you to make sure you include a percent error from that book value of 237. Yes. Um, cite some possible sources of error. Think about what's happening here thermally and such uh, and where some of the error may be involved. And then uh, think of some ways to improve upon this so we can get you know better data and, and maybe a little closer to that value. Sure. Sound good? Yep. All right, then. Good luck. Yep.